welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this morning or afternoon, depending on where you're at, for um, part two of memor memorialization. It's a mouthful. <laughs> and commemoration. So important. Such an important mouthful. Um, today, we are joined in discussion, navigating, creating, and holding space in our schools after loss. Um, my name is Oriana Ides, and we are joined um, with my um, beloved Leora Wolf Prusen. Um, together, we will moderate um, this conversation and kind of facilitate us into a deeper conversation and breakout rooms um, so soon. So, thank you for being here. My name is Oriana Ides, um, and we are here with Leora. We are today's moderators. Um, a few important reminders regarding the technical logistics of today. So, <clears throat> um, I will briefly review these. Uh, to ensure the best audio quality for the duration of our session, please mute your mics when you're not speaking. Um, and go off video if you're moving around. Um, you can click the closed caption or the CC um, bar at the bottom of the screen for that assistance. If you have a link to the resource, uh, to any resources you'd like to share with us, um, please feel free to share them in the chat um, and we can highlight them as well later um, via uh, email. Um, or correspondence. Um, we've made every attempt to make sure that today's presentation is secure. If for any reason we need to end the presentation unexpectedly, we will follow up um, with a registration um, information via email. So please look out for that um, in the case that something happens. Uh, this session will be recorded um, not your breakout groups, but the larger session. And so um, please keep an eye out for that um, on our event page. And again, Livia Rojas is present to support with um, tech. And so please private chat them if you need support. All right. If few housekeeping um, items before we move forward. Um, so we are um, SCRR. We are um, deeply committed to providing um, effective and sustainable change in the ways school communities and leadership um, build skill, knowledge, and attributes necessary to recover um, and renew post-crisis are big things. Um, that is who we are. We'd like to launch a poll briefly to see who you are um, before moving forward. And so there is going to appear a poll with two questions on your screen um, that ask how you're arriving to today's session. Um, so the first is um, in regards to just where you're at in this conversation. Did you join us last week? Um, are you showing up for the first time? The second is your role. And we did not capture every role and there's no room for um, other in today's poll. So just whatever closely aligns to um, the work that you do. And we're at about halfway, oh, beyond half. Closely we will, um, Almost at completion. All right, so I think we are sharing the results right now. We can see who we are in this space. So beautiful. Many of us have um, been a part of the conversation last week. That's awesome. Thank you for returning to us. And if you are new, which we see, um, about 31% are, that's also incredibly beautiful. Thank you for showing up today and for making this a priority. Um, in regards to our role, um, it's indicated that many of us are clinicians. Um, that we are also um, site educators and administrators. So really powerful to see 
who it is we're showing up as in this space. And we invite you, um, your roles are incredibly unique and important and you have um, really valuable information to share. So from that perspective, please offer into the chat um, what's coming up for you as you're um, engaged in this conversation. So back to who we are, thank you for um, engaging in that poll. Um, we're a relatively new project um, that um, is an initiative launched in June. Uh, I think we can remove the poll. I'll do that. Yeah, is the poll gone from your screen? Thumb up, thumb up, okay, sweet. Um, so we are the School Crisis Recovery and Renewal Project. As um, I was saying before, we are a relatively new project that launched in June of last year. So we're about half a year old um, in, in regards to this project, but come with great wisdom and years of experience um, leading schools through um, crisis um, recovery and renewal in various roles. And so it's an honor to be here with you. Um, our effort is really um, geared towards supporting everyone within a school building and administration beyond the school building, um, supporting young people in healing um, beyond crisis. Um, let's see. So we are supported by the National Child's Traumatic Stress Network. Um, and SAMHSA. Uh, we have to share this disclaimer, though they um, support us in the work that we're doing. The ideas presented today are our own um, and the ideas of our panelists and not endorsed um, by SAMHSA. So important for you to know. Right, so I wanna offer a very brief settling in activity um, for us, just three collective breaths together. And with those breaths, I will um, give an invitation for something to do with your hands as well. Um, this is a somatic holding um, exercise that can be done um, with more detail or, or briefly as I'm sharing today. So however you feel um, most comfortable, eyes closed is an option for you or lowered gaze um, is also um, an option. I invite you to find your feet on the ground beneath you and feel contact with your feet on the ground, um, maybe toes to heel. Um, I invite you to wiggle just a bit in your chair till you find a position that feels centered, <clears throat> not laborious, but comfortable and centered. I invite you to take our first deep collective breath together with the long, slow, steady inhale, suspended breath, and an even deeper exhale. I invite you to find your hand and place it to your heart. Notice its weight, your body's temperature, the solidity of your body. With your next inhale, place both hands on either side of your head. Experiment with the pressure, find what feels good for you and inhale. Exhale. And with our last collective breath together, I invite you to a butterfly hug opposite hands to shoulder, feel your edges, inhale, deeply, and as you exhale, rest hands to lap. Thank you for those three breaths together. I hope we feel more resourced, more centered, more present for what lies ahead. I'm gonna hand it over to Liora for um, a connector activity. Great, thank you. Hi everyone. Thank you, Oriana, for leading us 
through a through an opening and a welcoming and a grounding. Um, I so we are uh, we're an intimate group this morning. We're an intimate group this morning or afternoon, wherever you are. So we're actually going to. Um, not even do the techie tech of the menti poll, but I am going to ask, um, I'm going to ask you in the chat box, in the chat box, if you were here with us last week, which a lot of you were, to take a moment in the chat box and reflect on one conversation piece, one conversation piece that you heard that stayed with you. One conversation piece that, that you heard that stayed with you. Uh, and for those of you who were uh, panelists, so V and Silb and Tiffany, Alex and Shay, one conversation piece that you've been thinking about that you offered. For those of you who were not here with us, this is the time to do some learning. Yeah, all right, beautiful. We don't have to do things by best practices or maybe even problematizing what best practices mean. For whom, by whom, how do we know that it's a best practice? What does best mean? Shea um, beautifully brought up last week, uh, how updated best practices are, how do we return? Thank you for offering that. Yes, best for who, yeah. Um, yeah, in moments of memorialization, we're here to serve the students and not the organization. So centering what students might need. Um, and I know that uh, Syl beautifully brought up the balancing act of an administrator of having to balance uh, students' needs and organization and district policy needs. So that I hope also gets centered today. Um, beautiful, you're saying the real meaningful youth involvement takes real effort. <laughs> yeah, real twice, real twice. So authenticity and knowing that everyone's real will, might be different, subjective, right? There might be shared and there might be different. Developing healthier relationships to grief. So Tiffany offered us to expand our relationship to grief to potentially um, open us to memorializations and commemorations being joyful, being laughterful. Um, and Easter is also noting that there is no handbook and manual. And there are handbook and manuals. And there is no handbook and manual. And there are handbook and manuals. Also because we at SDR are a task with creating handbook and manuals. So there are handbook and manuals. But there may not be a the handbook and manual, meaning that they're because we are humans in this human work, in the, one of the most human experiences, which is death, that there, there is room for us to humanize this experience. Lovely, okay, asking students what they need and including youth voice at the table. And we might even reframe that, that youth voice and student voice is the table. Family voice is the table, community voice is the table, not even coming at the table. Um, working with the school and institution to have rituals in place to stand with in if there is the need for healing from death or trauma. And because, um, because we are all being grief sensitive in our work or trauma informed in our work, we can actually assume that grief is happening. Crisis is happening, trauma is happening. So there, there might be rituals all the time. We heard that from Alex last week, that the practice of having morning meetings, the practice of having uh, circles, the practice of having advisory, as Silb and Tiffany named, having structures that already create the container so that we have practice in our muscle to show up when times get extra, extra tender. Centering youth leadership, but not making them carry the weight as a way to avoid the work, do avoid the work ourselves. Uh, yep. So there's the the super delicate, artful practice, the craft of centering youth voice, but not saying, "All right, you guys do it." <laughs> that it's still our role as educators to be the educators in the space, to be the meaning making partners. Negotiating boundaries, emotional, legal, spiritual, gorgeous the creativity around memorialization, and then grief is not just outside of schools, but often perpetuated by schools. Yep, so Tiffany named the, and V also named that, that it's often that schools are, can be the site often of the grief and of, of, the, of, the repair, of the rupture and to normalize discomfort and generativity and the fertility of grief work for just Dr. Cariaga. Um, okay, so I hope that you're reading these. Yes, uh, you just added creating pockets that came from Shay last week, this idea of pockets of safety, pockets of safety. Okay, 
So as you're reminding and reading, this is really powerful. I'm the next question that I'm going to ask that's not going to come up on the screen. So if you're looking to the screen, it's not going to be there. It's going to come from here. The next question is, what are you bringing with you today? What are you bringing with you today? So it could be I'm bringing curiosity. I'm bringing, um, I know that that one of you in the chat box experienced death in, in your school community last week, last week, so it was acute. So you might be bringing experience or questions. Yeah, so we've got some hope and connection, experience with two death by suicides within three weeks, mm -hmm. and the, the proximity, the proximity. So some of us might be feeling more eager in this. Yeah, what are you bringing to you today in conversation? in this conversation. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Slowness, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we've had, uh, so, so more of you are experiencing student and staff deaths in the past couple of weeks, mass shooting that happened years ago, questions and curiosity, lovely. Okay, so, Again, to remind us, and I'm going to use Tiffany's word of slowness to also watch my pace. Thank you. That um, that some of us are coming to this conversation with more curiosity, more space to be um, open because we may have less proximity or less closeness to something that's acute. And some of us might be feeling a little bit more compressed and needing the, the how-tos because we might be in response mode. So we at FDRR, we talk a lot about the difference between response, which is the in the now, it's right in front of me, I'm handling, triaging, to recovering, stabilizing, to then renewing, which is about reimagination, regrowth, possibility. And just watching where you are might actually indicate where you might be. And all of that is okay. All of that is okay. Thank you. I'm gonna turn it back to Oriana, um, who's got some birds chirping in the background. <laughs> it's so beautiful, it's so lovely. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for um, bringing into this moment what was elevated last week um, and what um, I'm really feeling is like elevated in our lives on a daily basis through work and, and outside of our work. Thank you so much. And so today is incredibly important for so many um, reasons, as you all highlighted the acute trauma that we're in loss um, that we are experiencing like in real time. Um, also the, the residue of things that have um, lingered with us is really important for our communities to metabolize in moving forward um, and envisioning uh, something different. Um, that includes healing. And so um, we want to just elevate um, these four areas um, presented to you on the screen. So memorialization and commemorization is incredibly complicated work, as Leora was saying. There is no um, full encompassing manual for it, though there is text and incredible community wisdom that we can learn from. Um, that, you know, this is really central um, to creating safety in our school communities. Um, May is an incredibly important month in regards to ceremony, um, endings and new beginnings, and also the year um, anniversary of George Floyd's death, his murder, um, though, and we must acknowledge how much loss we've also included uh, experienced in this year. So that uh, police violence did not end on that day, um, but we have been um, re-experiencing the, the trauma and the loss and the crisis, um, the hands of police violence and our lived experience matters. So for, for these reasons, we thought um, holding this space in a two-part conversation um, was really important that it couldn't just be one hour and a half. It couldn't just be um, us talking to you, but that it needed to be a really generative, um, including your perspective, experience, and question. Um, so we wanna offer what today might feel like for you. Um, we are going to stop 
start with a, a continue a, some recap of what um, it is we have already discussed um, in introducing our facilitators that are going to now hold space in breakout group um, with us all and it we're a small group today so it can feel very intimate hopefully um, and then we'll come back together for some more full group conversation um, we really hope that this is a welcoming space so you are invited to show up as you are mindfully um, acknowledging that we are holding so much there are multiple pandemics occurring in our lives right now um, the pandemic of racism and of covid um, and the persisting health inequities that um, have existed for us um, generations <clears throat> long we're at a really powerful turning point though and have opportunity to um, envision something new. And so um, we invite you to, to come as you are. This is a space where feeling is, is okay. Um, this is not a therapeutic space though we want it to feel um, as though you're held. Um, it's also a space of sharing um, your wisdom and experience and question is elevated um, and that there is space for that and a space also of learning. So in this area, we all have so much to learn um, and so much to share. Um, we have a parking lot um, that, you know, this is going to be a conversation that does not encompass everything. Um, and so we want to really acknowledge that everything is valuable in giving um, attention um, and prolonging the dialogue. And so we wanna invite you to use the um, parking lot. Uh, there's a jam board that was just dropped into the link. And if you have um, points that you wanna elevate that you don't have time for, or maybe this is not the correct conversation for it, but that there, there needs to be an elaborated conversation on um, the topics, please use this uh, jam board. All right. Thank you, Livia, for including that link in the chat. And so now we have opportunity to meet our amazing, powerful, critical faculty that joined us last week, dropped so many uh, gems, so much wisdom um, from multiple perspectives. So we wanna invite them um, onto the screen. Um, I will introduce their name, um, their uh, camera will turn on, and if you could share your um, role, your pronoun, and maybe one conversation point that really resonated with you from last week or something that you wish you said that you didn't. Um, and we'll actually go in the order of um, the image here. So so Alex, I invite you to, to, to come on screen and if you could introduce yourself first, your name, your role, um, pronouns if you feel comfortable, and then what's resonating um, from last week. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Bennett. I'm Zooming from Vermont, uh, where I am an educator and professional development facilitator and an author with my very first book coming out on Tuesday, which is exciting. Um, and uh, I use she, her pronouns. And I said this in the chat already, but I was just really deeply appreciating um, Tiffany's point from last week about partnering with youth but not putting the onus on youth to lead everything as a way for us to avoid actually doing the hard work. Um, and that it, that is just, it's just such a great point, not only in this conversation, but in so many other conversations. And so that really stuck with me. Thank you. Um, Beth, welcome. Sail. Good morning. I'm Beth Silbergeld. So she, hers, I am a principal at Leadership High School in San Francisco. And what I was thinking about in the last week since the panel is when I, when I became the principal about a week later, we tragically lost a student. And I look, and I ha I'm having a really hard time remembering concretely what 
those days looked like um, and how we, I know we showed up for our staff. I, I can remember sitting together with staff. I can remember announcing it in a community meeting, but I also feel there, there was a place where we still had a lot to learn and grow from. And um, it was really complicated. And I'm, as I'm moving forward out of this role um, and transitioning to be in another school site, I'm thinking about what might I need to do in order to prepare the next principal um, so that there is some something codified, some guidelines to set her up for what, what may be ahead of her and what, of course, hopefully, um, you know, she'll, she'll feel ready to take up along with staff who have been here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, Dr. Christina V. Yariyal. So your name, your role, um, and then what, what resonated with you from last week or what did you wish you um, had said but didn't? Um, hi, it's good to be back. Um, v, the director of the teacher education program, the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Um, she series pronouns. A lot is still sitting with me. I think one thing that has been sitting with me since last week is just being painfully reminded that grief comes in waves and that we have to, to honor it um, as such. So I've just been thinking a lot because it brought up obviously a lot mm -hmm. and wondering what does it look like to think about the importance of like anniversaries like every year and the rituals around anniversaries and what does that look like also in our schools um, to carry on those memories. So we didn't talk as much about that explicitly, but that's been weighing really uh, heavily um, on me this past week. Thank you. Shay, welcome. Shay Martin. Hello. Um, I am Shay. Uh, pronouns are they, them. Um, uh, I am an educator and a consultant and writer based in Southern Vermont. Um, I think for me, um, over the past week, um, a story that I think still, um, shared with us has been sitting with me. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it was a story about kind of like, V was just talking about anniversaries and like a school administrator coming in and not understanding, right. That like that November was like an anniversary of a lot of different student deaths. Um, and I think something that I have been thinking about um, is how do we make space for anniversaries? Um, how do we make space for grieving in our classrooms and our schools every single day? Um, thinking about how grief and um, trauma um, show up all the time for our students and for our teachers and colleagues. And so just continuing to think about how do we create spaces where students um, have language, have um, modes, have systems of grieving, um, and also just existing in their full selves in classrooms and schools? Thank you. Thank you. Such heavy questions. My mind is just <laughs> um, running with, with all of the ways um, and all of the things that must be considered. Thank you, Shay. <clears throat> And Tiffany, Marie, welcome. Um, we invite you to share your um, role. And then again, just reiterating um, something that resonated with you from last week um, or something you wish you said that you didn't. Yes, good morning. I, I was actually thinking back to a um, very recently to a course that I used to teach in higher ed. And it was, um, cross listed so we got kids we got students from all across the university and I would get a lot of business majors and um I remember we we opened up we started a love lab and and we explored this idea of love in deep and meaningful ways and I remember um one of my students coming to me and saying uh I can't keep doing this and so when I asked him what the this is he said feeling as a business major, there's not space for this. And then I started to think about um, coaching with teachers 
and how so many of our stories are informed by pain and uh, by responding to and, and seeking to create spaces uh, from our own trauma that worked to address the neglect that we experience in schools. Yet, in those experiences, I still see folks who are being mentored to run, 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 push, 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 um, to show up for young people in their pain and, and without creating space to deal with and confront our own. And so I've been really silly, sitting with the type of infrastructure that's necessary to, if people are serious about this work, the type of rearranging and collapsing of the existing model that needs to happen if this is, if we do at all take wellness, um, and I put all these together, grief, work, and love, if we take any of this seriously, I was thinking about the fundamental shifts that need to happen in these spaces that we call schools um, for any of this to, to be done meaningfully and to, to be sustained. Beautiful. And thank you so much. I mean, that was one of the points that most resonated with me from last week is how central our own healing journey is as adults in this space and how we're more um, capable and resourced of holding young people through this journey responsibly if we're tending to our own wellness um, on a regular, consistent basis. Thank you so much for sharing that. <clears throat> So Yasmina is, is not with us. I want to just note that not today, sadly, um, though she has incredibly important perspective to offer. Um, we are joined by a few other people that um, are going to support us in our small breakout groups. So um, we are joined by our SCRR uh, field coaches and directors, um, Antoine, Francesca, and Jen um, are going to support us in facilitating um, the small breakout group. So I invite you to turn your camera on and give a wave. <clears throat> Lovely, thank you. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Leora. Cool, okay, thank you. All right, so now we're moving into our time where we actually get to share and discuss, share and discuss the whole point of today. Or if you can um, advance the slide one, one, that's what I wanted to say, advance the slide. <laughs> All right, so here's what the next 30 minutes of our shared lives might feel like. We're gonna move into small groups of about uh, 15. You'll have two, two co-facilitators uh, who were faculty of last week and an SERR staff to help take notes. So all you have to do is show up and offer questions, curiosities, resources, um, and actually lived experience. I think that's, we heard from a lot of you in the feedback last week that you really wanted to drill down and get into the, into the, um, the fascia of this work, the, the fascia of this work. So um, we're gonna encourage you, if you can, to be on video, if you have the emotional or uh, physical bandwidth. We're gonna encourage you, if you cannot be on video, to at least have audio. And if you can't have audio, then you got the chat. But we really, this next piece is not, uh, not only you listening, but also you, also you resourcing each other. We're going to encourage you to be mindful of your mic time. If you find yourself feeling really excited, maybe feeling really activated, um, taking up uh, a little bit more voice time to just do a little bit of quiet. I know for me as an extrovert, I got to count to 10. Otherwise, a lot of Leora. I'm going to remind us that even though the time might feel like this, that we're, uh, we get the gift of Adrian Marie Brown's sentence that there's always enough time for the right work. So if you leave this, if you leave this conversation together and you're, you're like, whoa, I really got so much and I still want more, the good news is that we as a project are here to continue this conversation. This is not going to be the only time. If you are someone, because we're all in education and mental health, we usually speak in acronyms, we're going to invite you to not do that so that we can spell them out, <laughs> spell them out. Um, we're going to try and say multi-tiered systems of support. Uh, we're going to try and say, you know, if we're using the word postvention to be clear about what we mean when we say that. Um, and again, because this is the first time that we're all doing this in this moment with these people, we're going to invite us to be flexible and adaptable. And then, of course, that this is 
the beauty of this gift is that there's this conversation is just here and there's a mad, there's kind of an alchemy, a chemistry of why these people, why you all at this moment and this time are coming together. So let's find where we're going with the conversation. With that, I'm gonna say audibly to staff and faculty that we are going to option A. So we'll have two folks, uh, Oriana, you'll be with Tiffany and V. Um, uh, Antoine and Jen will be with Silb and Alex and Shay will have Francesca. And I am, if you can move the slide one more, Oriana. Thank you. So you're gonna get an invitation right now. You'll get an invitation to a small breakout. Please join that small breakout. They will not be recorded. And in fact, we'll stop the recording soon. We'll pause it. I'm gonna stay in the main group in case you've got any questions. Um, and then we're gonna come back together at 12.15 Pacific time, 12.15 Pacific time, so that we have time to all share out and then to close together. Okay. All right, um, please accept the invitation to small breakout and have a beautiful time resourcing each other. Welcome back, welcome back. Hi everyone, hi. Hi, Leora. Hi. Oh, hi. I don't know who said that, but hello to you. Um, welcome back. That either felt too long or too short, and maybe some of you it felt just right. That's how the breakouts go. Um, so if you, just a reminder, if you just joined us, if you can mute yourself, because if you move from small to main, you go unmuted. Um, so welcome back. Uh, Levy and I were experiencing a very high case of FOMO. So hopefully in our, in our whole group share out right now, we can assuage some of that FOMO. Um, we're gonna do, Oriana, uh, is it okay if I, yeah, okay. You know what this means, you know. Yeah, great, got it, there we are. Um, all right, let's move into some sharing out. So if, uh, Livia, if you can drop the um, Jamboard link one more time into the chat box, that would be helpful. Everyone should be seeing my Jamboard. Um, and if you have never Jamboarded before, this is an opportunity to voyeur, to watch someone else do it and then maybe get the hang of it at play. Um, I'm just going to, as we, as we share out, you've got a couple of options. You can add in your own reflections into the chat box. You can um, ping questions that may have come up that you wanna make sure that you note for everyone. That's on page one. Page two is where we're gonna hang out for right now is the takeaways from today. And then I'm also gonna invite you if you move to page three, it's like it's almost like we're in real life and there were the post-it sticky notes all around the room. Uh, and then on page three is if you have resources or recommended organizations. So Alex's book, Linda's Herd Alliance, all the things can be posted there. We're gonna hang out on, on uh, here first. Um, and this is gonna be a double. So I'm going to invite the person from, we're going to go three, two, one. So V and Tiffany's group, then Shay and Alex, and then Silb. Um, and you're going to share your two to three takeaways. And as your colleagues are sharing out, if you also want to put your own takeaways, you can click on that sticky note, which is right under the arrow. Um, and you can press, you can write into a sticky note and press save and have it posted up. So it's a multiple options of our learning. Um, I'm going to swing it to V and Tiffany for whoever is sharing out from V and Tiffany. And we're going to be, we're going to have these chats be short and sweet, the two to three, two to three takeaways. I can share from our group. Is that cool? <laughs> I can try. Um, mm, two to three. Okay. Uh, so we talked about how you know, when folks are asking for these like concrete steps of what this looks like, uh, we started talking about the body and how that is a place where um, a lot of this work is, is founded on. And we talked about how, you know, oftentimes the institutions or places that we navigate are not safe for the body. And so we find ourselves going on vacations and going away from the spaces to finally feel the things that we need to feel. And sometimes um, that is often a very scary place to be by ourselves. And so we have a need for more infrastructure, more structural support to actually feel ourselves within the spaces and not outside of them. 
Um, and folks also talked about the need to really set boundaries and just to re replenish ourselves this summer because it's just been um, the most this past year. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cariaga. Um, hopefully I got some of that. <laughs> and if you're in group three and I did not capture that, capture that correctly, please add your own. Look, there was like so much richness, the boundary of the sticky note couldn't even handle it. Um, so beautiful. So talking about, so we heard you mentioning safety as primary institution, and also that a way to actually practice memorialization and commemoration is to center our boundaries, our needs, our safety, uh, and our regulation and our stability. Did I hear that right? Ish, maybe, nodding? Yeah, I think so. I'll look at the post-it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, and please add to chat, of course. Okay, um, and thank you, Dr. Cariaga, for summarizing. If you wanna hear more from Dr. Cariaga, you can join us on June 3rd for her keynote, where she might just go off for 20 minutes about how going on vacation is escapism. No, okay, um, we all need vacation. Let's go to group two, to Shay and Alex. Who's sharing out from Shay and Alex? That is Lindsay is going to share out. Amazing. Great. Hi. Um, I put one in already. We spoke a little bit about um, the challenges around navigating the space between practical policy and organizational procedures and memor memorializations. And in a place where there are significant high losses, 20 to 50 a year, how does this how do you do this and how do you do it in a fair way so the losses at the beginning of the year are as acknowledged and honored as those at the end of the year um we also another takeaway was um the idea of messaging and language um and the community or cultural or family conflicts with with messaging a confirmed suicide as a confirmed suicide, for example. Um, so how are you, how do you acknowledge something when there's so many feelings and ideas about whether or not you say that out loud and if that's even necessary, um, how to honor the students and what knowledge they may have from, you know, community, um, the swift community uh, news through social media. Mm -hmm. So how do you take maybe youth that know everything and adults who aren't saying it, how do you balance that? Very complicated space. Yeah, so y'all didn't really get to so much in your 30 minutes together. <laughs> like an entire dissertation. Okay, Lindsay, I missed, if someone could be my ally right now and help us with the last piece, if you can do the last piece about social media so that we yeah. can, can hang on to that. Uh, both I'll, I'll, I'll put it in there. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, group two. Uh, and thank you, Lindsay, for, for spotlighting. Let's go to Silb's group, Antoine and Jen, group one. Group one, that would be me. So um, we started out with talking about this pervasive and stubborn common myth of contagion that oftentimes surfaces um, around suicide loss um, and talked about, you know, there still seems to be a lot of stubborn myth around that if we talk about it, that it will somehow be harmful. And somebody made a great comment about the similarity with sex education myths and that we need tools and protocols that what is shareable is bearable. Um, and then there was a great question around, I wonder if the fear is really more related to our lack of skill in these conversations. Um, the importance of aligning to SEL and postvention and, um, and leveraging the evidence for those who may be hesitant and that postvention is prevention. And then we had 
a lovely um, conversation around raising the issue of keeping students safe, especially student in um, unsafe environments or neighborhoods. And then we had a nice little um, conversation with complexity around memorialization, how important it is and that we need to be careful that we treat every death the same, or do we, or can we? <laughs> what is that tension? Um, what does that mean the same? And um, some commentary on the role of the media, because the media can play a huge role in glorifying or amplifying um, deaths. And that memorials happen. They happen outside of school, they happen in school, that vigils happen. And I will stop there. Thank you. Wow, so powerful. Thank you. OK, um, I am going to encourage you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but I am going to encourage you to continue to post in the Jamboard um, so that we can hold on to these takeaways. And what we will do uh, at SCRR is, um, is codify your inputs in the notes and theme them and start to identify where there might be room to do some work together. Um, and that's part of, and I am just gonna super multitask right now, watch this happen, everyone, with ease, with ease. No. Um, I am going to also share that our team, Jen and Antoine and Francesca and, uh, and our partners and Oriana and Nivia, we've been talking a lot about what it would mean to create a community practice focusing on memorialization and commemoration for this coming year, um, to be in study with each other, to be in, in grappling, a grappling together um, so that we can hold the complexity together. Uh, and if you're interested, it might mean that some of the faculty that have been wise teachers for us the last two weeks uh, might be involved in that. So please let us know if that's something that you'd be interested in. Um, without, ah, great. So we're getting resources shared. Reminder, happy for you to share them in the chat. Also happy for you to post them on that page through your Jamboard. Chat's the easiest and we'll make sure that it gets all in one place. Thank you, Stacey. Okay, um, so let's look ahead. A couple things, and Oriana, you'll just chime in because um, I'm watching our time together. So you'll chime in when you wanna add some flair and flavor. We hope that you join us. Uh, Nivia, please feel free, free, free to drop this, yep, in the chat. Um, we hope that you join us on June 3rd for our strategies for mending the wounds. It's our Summer Institute Art and Ritual uh, for Educators. This is a brain heart child of Oriana. Uh, and as you heard us mention, Dr. Cariaga will be opening us. And then we have five beautiful workshops for educators by educators, all focusing on ourselves. It's not a session to train you to do something. It's actually a session for you. <laughs> Radical, wild. Um, and during the day, we have a separate, it's almost like we were in a conference. And then the next room, there is a listening session on really holding space to process this year. Where do you, where are you, where have you been this year? Where do we need to go when we think about recovery and the possibilities for recovery? So we hope that you join us for both of those experiences. And our colleagues at the National Training and Technical Assistance Center for Children, Youth and Families, this Friday, that's tomorrow, are doing a Facebook Live event. Um, so please feel free to spread the word to your school communities to reflect and, and connect and renew. Um, and that's around specifically children's mental health and youth and behavioral health. Okay, um, Livia will drop a survey uh, and that is really important for us to hear feedback, especially if you're like those of you who've been private chatting me. Yes, yes, please. I want a community practice around memorialization and commemoration. Um, some other things that our team is thinking about, let me just check time. Other things that our team is um, not just thinking about, but in the planning stages for that we are um, most likely, if not very likely, if not going to launch a suicide post-invention community of practice for educators and also one for students coming this fall to help us think about the term post-invention and what it is and what it could be and what it would look like to be student-centered and educator-centered. And then also a, uh, a pedagogy of grief, body of work 
both teaching about grief for those of us in teacher education uh, and in pre-service, and then also for us to even to learn and sit with what grief looks like. And of course, this body of work is connected to that. So lots of things coming. Please let us know if you are interested in being involved. I'm going to stop it. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop it. <laughs> and I'm going to hand it to Oriana um, for just a closing pause moment before we transition because we just processed a lot, held a lot here or here. Group three talked about the soma. So we'll end with the soma, one with the body. Uh, and then we'll hang out for a couple minutes if you're interested in just sharing how this felt for you, or you can do that in the survey. Um, and before I toss it to Ori, I just want to do a mad, super fierce. Thank you to Jen, Francesca, and Antoine for supporting, and to Shay and Alex and Tiffany and Silb and V for holding space with us these last two weeks. So please throw up all of the reactions. Um, and I'm going to hand it to Oriana. All right. Thank you. So um, just in a similar way, it's as we started, I'm going to offer a hold. Um, butterfly hug, um, give yourself an embrace and in doing so acknowledge your journey for the last hour and a half. Um, what did you feel? What did you learn? What new information did you take in? You think about your edges and how you might have been stretched in the last hour and a half or how you might have graciously made space for something new. Um, and in thinking about that, what's one thing you might do today with the remainder of your day to soothe your edges? You can type that into the chat in closing if you want to share with us, inspire us, let us learn from you. Walk, some break from the screen. Ooh, popsicle. <laughs> Love on my doggy. Thank you. Thank you for stretching with us, Leah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Again, thank you to our faculty and staff. We wish you the rest of the day feeling really resourced and that your time is really acknowledged and appreciated and that you are not alone in this work. You are not alone. We are building this community across the country um, and are just so grateful for all that you're holding. And we're grateful to hold it with you. Be well, everyone. We'll see you soon.